but it's something we talk about here all the time. Do you feel like there's something inside of you that inspires you on your mission through life? Like from the time you were a little kid, was there a, you know, a voice within you that, you know, was pushing you, urging you onto this path? Yeah, I think so. I feel like I always wanted to do better. And my father, he came to the United States, opened up his own business within a year, then sent for me, my mother, and my sister. He always drove fancy cars, Cadillacs. He hung out at this little bar on Utica called Salt and Pepper. But he always wanted the best things. He left my mom's and my sister and left us in the projects when I was 12 years old, just left. Wait, wait, uh, East New York? East New York, yeah. He just left us and moved with some other woman down in Florida. And I think that was the best thing that ever happened in my life. Because with him there, I couldn't be a man. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't, grow, I couldn't grow to be who I was. He would be too controlling. You know what I'm saying? So without him there, my mother just let me do what I had to do. So I ran the streets. I did what I had to do. But the key was my mother kept me in Catholic school. Even though we lived in the project, she worked hard to keep me and my sister in Catholic school for eight years. So I was able to see things slightly different than everybody else that I grew up with. I was able to hang out with white kids, Chinese kids, Indian kids. Just saw life a little bit differently and hung out with them. So that strive to yearn to be successful came from my mom. She was a registered nurse. For 18 years, Brooklyn Jewish Hospital worked the night shift just to send me and my sister to school. So I had to make it. And she gave me a choice when I graduated from high school. She said, either you go to college and get a job, you're not going to stay home. And that's what made me take the clothing thing serious and come out to L.A. and start to make this thing happen. And then in terms of business, when I look at things, I'd be like, the little things we go through in business, having to deal with another company or deal with a manufacturer, that's nothing compared to what you got to deal with in the streets. So if you can't figure this one out, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And nothing's given to us. Every day we wake up on the same grind every day, all day, because it's fun. Mm-hmm. So mental. Yeah, and that's, um, absolutely. Once you, once you're in, I'm from Brooklyn, you know, as a young kid hustling in the street, if there comes a time you come to an age and you say, I want to get out of here. Yeah. I don't want to live here no more. I don't want to raise my kids. You're conscious. You see, you see on Tove, you say, wow. Black people could live places, but motherfuckers, when you come out the door, they're not going to snatch your chain and put a gun in your face when, you, when you're with your wife and your kids. You know, you don't have to worry about somebody killing your kids tonight. When you hear the gunfire, is that my kid looking out the door, looking out the window? We didn't have phones back then, so you don't know if they got shot or not. You don't know. You know what's crazy, too? Like, you don't know. If you grow up in Brooklyn and you deal with this every day, you don't know it any other life but that. Until you move somewhere else and see a life, it could be different. Otherwise, you think that it's just your reality for everybody. Especially nowadays, they have social media, so now people can see. Back in the days, we had none of that. Yeah. The only thing you saw is what you saw. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what, Kate? I was looking at, I look at, um, I love YouTube now, so on YouTube, I could could go Brownville Hoods, and I could look at the hoods of Brownville and see all my neighborhoods, and and I see people having interviews about just Brownville and how disgusting it is how bad they want to move out of there and how many killings and robberies and everything and rapes and everything happened there and I'm just saying when I'm looking at these people I said this is my neighbor I said these people are animals and this and that and how they eat and the cops are always fucking abusing them and fighting with them they're dropping fucking from a 20 foot story project they throw them um, fucking stoves and refrigerators on top of <laughs> cops heads and cars and shit this is crazy you know what I'm talking yeah, about yeah. this is fucking crazy man so I'm saying to myself I'm looking at this, this is my neighbor and still is a crazy I said God I want to be there so bad but I can't be there without some stupid fucking shit happen but I want to be there so bad I said feel the energy yeah I can never do it again yeah. I have to kill a motherfucker quick Why do you want to be there, Mike? Because that's who I am. But I'm not that way anymore, but it's still who I am. And I want to understand why was I that way? Can I, I want to observe that. I want to see me before, you know what I mean? Not that I'm not mean, I want to see that person. I want to be my kids. I want my kids to talk to that person. You know what I said? That's your father without a big fancy name and big fancy clothes and cars. That's your father right there. You're afraid of him? That's your father. How can you be afraid to say hi to him? And my kid's like, fuck no, I don't want to talk to him. You know, I said, man, you shouldn't be like that. That's your father. That's just how I felt to your father. Nobody wanted to talk to him either. Mm-hmm. They have no uh, no inclination. You know, there's just no way they could fathom living there, being from there. 
Yeah. Of people screaming and cursing at their father and their mother right in front of their face, saying bad, crazy shit to them. Or the cops beating up your mother or your father right in front of you, you can't do shit. You know, I have my kid, my son is 22, and I try to tell him stories about how we grew up. They look at us like we're yeah. fucking a clown. Yeah, fucking They like, said, please. Later, yeah, daddy. Yeah, please. Yeah, daddy. Yeah, okay, dad. Sometimes I wish I could just drop him off in the projects for a month. Yeah, dad, you're going to throw me off the roof, dad. Okay, dad, thank you. I'm going to get thrown off the roof, dad. Yeah, dad. Somebody's going to shoot me for no reason, dad. Just because I'm from this neighborhood, somebody's going to shoot me because I'm from this neighborhood. This neighborhood never did nothing to that neighborhood. How are they going to shoot? That don't make sense, dad. <laughs> they don't get it. It's the truth. How do you guys make sense of that? It goes like this. I don't know how cause perception is, but this is how I go from my world. I'm brown from New York, right? This is the real, right? There's people in Brownsville, you know, you be nice to them. There's some people in Brownsville, they have the biggest family and they're mean, and they know that they have the biggest family. And they all have different personalities. Even though some of the family members don't get along, if it's enough you get into the fight, the whole fucking building's coming out on the side. Even though they don't like him, they know he's a no good motherfucker. So we know, be nice to this family. Be nice to these. Avoid people who can crush you and try to be cool with them. Just like we live now with corporations. Don't get this corporation mad at you. Be nice with them. Don't fuck with the fucking Rockefellers. Be nice to the Rothschild. That kind of stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the same, way in the, the same way in the hood. Be nice to this family. Be nice to these guys. Sometimes when these niggas going to take your shit, they got to give it up to them. Take a loss. It's okay. <laughs> give it yeah, up to them. It they, happens. They, will, they will fuck you and hope they start to like you. Because sometimes it's crazy. Sometimes this guy been robbing me all the time, and then somebody else is robbing me, and then he takes up for you. And he <laughs> likes you all of a sudden. This is just. He protects you. Listen, this is. I, you don't know how these motherfuckers think. You don't know if this guy's going to kill you today or going to kill somebody for you today. It's just crazy, man. You talk about dealing with some people who are real psychopaths. And they're cool with you, and you hang out with them every day, but they all fuck what they can do to another human being. It's just unfucking fathomable. Yeah. So that's the word we come from. You know, like yeah. when all these guys come out of jail from doing these 25 years, these 30 years, and they're fucking mad, they send them right to our neighborhood. They don't send them no fucking, they send them, you think, we, you think we're not scared of them? We're scared of them too. We don't want them in our fucking community, but we're too afraid to tell them to get the fuck out. These guys are savage and vicious and mean people, man. It's no option. You just got to deal with it. Yeah. When you're asking us how the perception is, it's like... We know how to be nice to people. Black people know how to be real nice to people. <laughs> We've been terrorized a lot in our own community. We know how to be nice to people. We don't want to get fucked up. Mm. <laughs> we don't want to be fucked up. We want to get the fuck away. We don't want to go back. That's the main thing. You lose a fight, you lose your money. The first thing is, am I going to go back to Brownsville? Do I got to go back and live in them fucking projects after all this major success? Do I got to go back in that fucking project and open that fucking door and come out in that courtyard and see these motherfuckers? <laughs> hey, what are you back, huh? <laughs> oh, nigga. <laughs> you know, that scares me, actually. Oh, nigga. You could die of a heart attack, motherfucker. <laughs> That's a scary thought. <laughs> oh, these mad these motherfuckers probably ransack the fucking apartment as soon as you get in and ram what the fuck you got, whatever shit you wow. got, nigga. Give me your tattoos, motherfucker. They're fucking skin you. You know I'm serious though. I'm making yeah. fun of them, I'm skin no, serious. Yeah, yeah. I understand. <laughs> no, I remember I, understand. Uh, I remember dudes used to rob you for your gold teeth. Oh yeah. yeah. You got a gold tooth, they'll punch that shit out your mouth. Nigga. Oh, tooth can't even fit their mouth, they're gonna figure out how to fix that shit. Figure first. it out. Your sneakers, I remember them taking my sneakers a couple of times. <laughs> taking my fucking sneakers. Shit. Straight up. And um, listen, can I tell you something? You're so fucking filled, filled with fear you can't even, even if the thought of fighting back doesn't even pass, go through your mind. You feel like a fucking sheep in fucking hell. You're so fucking afraid, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then next thing you know, you meet, you meet, you meet a guy, right, in school or something. He's a normal guy. He's like you. He's a nice guy. But his brother's one of those guys. So now you're a cool guy. And you start hanging out with the brother. Brother see you with his brother, and they come to rob people. His brother not did, but they see you. Normally they rob you. Hey, let him go. He's my brother. Him, my brother hangs out. Then you start hanging out with you. And then you come like, become like dumb. Now you're the bully. Mm. And that's how it goes. Because you were accepted in. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Carl, I was born in New York City, too. And I yes, lived South in Brooklyn. Brooklyn was, uh, uh, Park, Park Slope. Slope. I went to school there for a little bit. 
PS 107, man. I went to John Jay. Oh, oh amazing. On 7th Ave? Yeah. Yeah. But I remember as a little kid seeing the sneakers thrown up on the electrical wires. Yeah. And that was so ominous and scary to me as a little kid, seeing that. Because I didn't know what that meant. It looked like somebody... It means somebody got a new pair of sneakers. Is that all it means? Yeah, and they threw the old ones up there. <laughs> <laughs> That used to scare me. I used to think that oh, was someone got killed. With, no, somebody just want to diss you and take your sneakers and throw right. it to make you let your day miserable. Right. Or that. That too. Yeah. Because that's just, that's, that's what it was like. It's some mean ass fucking kids. Yeah, a lot of mean kids. Mean fucking kids. Yeah. Kids are pretty fucking mean. And if you if you continue to let them push you, they actually kill you. Mm-hmm. If you let them. Lord of the Flies. Yeah. Carl, where do you think we come from? That's interesting, huh? Like whatever the very we, first... Whatever we come from... Your very from first fucking, ancestor, your most ancient yeah. ancestor, thousands and thousands of years the ago. The first man that had you in his sack. The first <laughs> man, not your first... The first man that ever existed with your blood. With your DNA. Who do I think he is? Yeah. Or where I think he comes from? Sure, yeah. Have you ever thought about that? You know, when I grew up in Brooklyn, we, we got knowledge of self when I was like... 11 years old. My name was Naquan Barshawn. God Allah. Were you 5%er? 5%er? I was a 5%er too. 5%er. Yeah. Mm. Prince Love. That's your attribute. Yeah. Mm. His name. So, so we have to study these lessons that tells you about the black man and our essence, supreme being. Interesting. And you couldn't come outside unless you knew your lessons. Oh, you get fucked you up. get fucked up. It's today's equality. Yeah. And you have to explain equality. <laughs> Wow. The origin of equality. Oh, that yeah. fucking. T- oh, yeah. you don't know that you fucked it. up. Man. Stop. <laughs> Tell me, oh. this is amazing. So I remember the king is he who sits. He who sits on the throne of power and rules wisely and justly. That's what king meant. And each date had a different mathematics, and you had to say what the date was and what it all being born to. <laughs> And that's in a circle, and everybody's saying it, and it's coming off the top of your head. And it's not as, it's not as um, short as he's explaining. It's long. It's long, it's, very he's long. He's talking long. He's there fucking talking for 30 <laughs> minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. 30 minutes now, the next guy turn and talk about yeah. his, his, his fucking His day, name, And yeah. it has to be what it means and what, how it equates with today's mathematics. <laughs> oh, like, oh, that's a mind-boggling <laughs> shit. Wow. And you're a young kid, and you're you know kid. it. You're a young kid. You got to know, know it. it. You, you got know to it. know it. You Know it. You don't got. If that was your protect. If you see, if you down with the the five percent is. You can see you, you, forty of them coming ahead. Of you you could be prote- you protected. Yeah. You protected mm. in, in all different neighborhoods of Brooklyn. You're good. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what we wanted with protection. We yeah. didn't want to get ripped off and yeah. robbed and yeah. look be humiliated in front of our family, or in front of our friends, or our girlfriends. That's all people wanted in Brooklyn. Yeah. I remember my mom used to find my lessons because my mother used to go to Baptist church, had me in Catholic school, and here I am with some five percent of nation of Islam paperwork. <laughs> she used to take it and throw them away. She said, find the papers, throw the papers away. I said, get another copy of it. She was oh, like, I had to fuck. study it. Yeah. Because you knew that it would be beneficial for you. Absolutely. To be with you better know that. Man. Yeah, that's real. So when you ask me supreme being, I think the supreme being is just a spirit, man. Hmm. And we're all being born from that. And I do believe that we originate in Africa. Hmm. I do believe that. I believe all black people originated in Africa and started to descend throughout the world. I don't believe that. You don't believe that? Mm -mm. Okay. I don't believe that. You know why? Tell me. So how do you think we make the different races? If 